Green MP Chloe Swarbrick's under fire for using a term that many perceive to be anti-Semitic at a rally supporting Palestinians. By many, they're meaning in New Zealand primarily the Jewish Council and their evangelical supporters. That's the many, just, just so we're clear. At the weekend. The Jewish Council of New Zealand is calling on her to explain herself. Political reporter Amelia Wade has more. Ignorance from a war museum is despicable! Green MP Chloe Swarbrick was furious on Saturday. We stand for a free Palestine. She took the stage at a pro-Palestine rally after Labour MP Phil Twyford was shouted off the stage. Folks. And escorted out by police. It was then that Swarbrick and the Greens took over and she yelled this controversial phrase. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. She essentially stoked the crowd and uh, with this incendiary chant. From the, river the rallying cry calls for a unified Palestine state, stretching from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea, a return to the land that is now Israel. The slogan has been around for decades and appears in Palestinian folklore and revolutionary songs. From the river to the sea. But it is often labelled pro-Hamas and many, like Juliet Moses, believe it's a call to destroy Israel. It is offensive. It is widely understood to be a call for the annihilation of Israel and quite possibly... The words widely understood is doing some pretty heavy lifting there. It is their perspective. I'm going to show you the, the, the two sides argument too, but the word widely understood, just so people are clear, is doing some heavy lifting like making it seem that it's a 90% assurity that that's what most people think. Uh, Pat, quick, yeah. quick question. Um, as of right now, um, whose people are getting destroyed? I think it's Israel's, isn't it? Because they're the ones who are who are, are suffering the worst impact at the moment. Am I wrong? Hmm. Not sure if that's accurate. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check my sources and come back to you. The hmm. Jewish people. The phrase is also included in Hamas's manifesto, Moses wants answers from Swarbrick. I think she should explain why she used it and what exactly she meant by using it and what her intention was. Neither Chloe Swarbrick nor her boss Manama Davidson, who was there on Saturday, would do any explaining today. But the Greens did send through a statement, but it didn't address why Swarbrick used such an inflammatory chant. Interesting turn of phrase by the New Zealand media, an inflammatory chant, um, controversial. Inflammatory makes it seem like if you use this, you know it's going to inflame. I'm not sure whether that's accurate or not, but that's the, how the media is selling it. But News Hub's learned of some disquiet about the remarks, with one Green insider telling us that Swarbrick undermined her calls for peace and justice by deliberately using such a charged chant. Amelia Wade... So, uh, Chewy, I've got um, quite an in-depth conversation from Al Jazeera to talk about this phrase, what it all means, but this is a little bit in your warehouse. You want to share any thoughts on it, mm. first of all? So there's a bit of history to that um, that particular phrase, and, and, and there's one key takeaway there. Doesn't it rhyme so well in English? So I noticed David Seymour um, criticising Chloe for using uh, a phrase that Hamas have, have apparently used. It's, Hamas didn't come up with it. No. I've there got are that, versions oh, we, of it that go back we, to the, the, the PLO. Yeah, 64. I've got all that but history it is, this year shortly. But it is an English phrase. Yeah. It, 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 it rhymes in English. It, it was created by, by activists that spoke English. There, yeah. there are different interpretations of it. I'm not I'm not um, going to poo-poo that. There, there are versions of it that you could go, well, they want the whole state of Palestine from the river to the sea. Th there are revisions of that that are like, well, no, they want Palestinians to be free from the river to the sea and free of the, the almost, well, I was going to say almost apartheid state, the apartheid state that they live in. Um, and I, I think that's that's not up for debate. If you, you can watch any sort of footage on how Palestinians, especially in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem, are, are treated, it is an apartheid state. Um, I, I think when you look at what is going on in Gaza at the moment, it, it's 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 beyond any sort of 
reciprocation. It has gone way beyond that. Um, I noticed a story the other day that um, Israel um, blew up an ambulance and said, yeah. hey, look, it's, uh, it, it's because that they were were transporting Hamas fighters or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. That's a war crime. And it has been a war crime for decades. Um, in the Geneva Convention, you can't you can't hit ambulances, and, yep. and they've done it. They've, they've bombed hospitals. Let, let's, and, um, and the, let's the balance is, is way out of whack. Let's look at the actual slogan, eh? Because that's what we were talking about. Mm. From the river to the sea, what does the Palestinian slogan actually mean? Now, I've just highlighted a few pieces I'm going to read to you from the story on Al Jazeera. Uh, so this is a bit of history about how it's being used right now or, or, or the controversy around it. The United Kingdom's Labour Party on Monday suspended Member of Parliament Andy MacDonald for using the phrase between the river and the sea in a speech at a pro-Palestinian rally. Earlier this month, Home Secretary Suella uh, Braviraman described pro-Palestinian demonstrations as hate marches and warned that the slogan should be interrupted as an indication of a violent desire for the immolation, elimination of Israel. The Football Association in the UK has banned players from using that slogan on their private social media accounts. Australian police took a similar stance banning a pro-Palestine protest on the basis of the chant and claiming the slogan originally formulated by the Palestinian Liberation Organisation, the PLO, had been adopted by the armed group Hamas. German authorities declared the slogan forbidden and in indictable and called on schools in the capital Berlin to ban the use of uh, kefirs, the Palestinian scarf. Uh, what are the origins of the slogan? That's just a bit of a background as to how the West is treating that slogan at the moment. Mm. What are the origins of the slogan? Upon its creation by uh, Diaspora, Palestinians in 1964, under the leadership of Yasser Arafat, the PLO, called for the establishment of a single state that extended from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea to encompass its historic territories. The debate over partition predates the formation of the State of Israel in 1948. A plan put forward a year earlier by the United Nations to divide the ter territory into a Jewish state occupied 62% of the former British mandate and a separate Palestinian state was rejected by Arab leaders at the time. Uh, Naima Sultani, and this is uh, what does it actually mean, to Palestinians and Israeli observers alike, different interpretations over the meaning of the slogan hang on the term free. Uh, a lecturer at the Law School of Oriental and African Studies in London said the uh, adjective express the need for equality for all inhabitants of historic Palestine. Those who support apartheid and Jewish supremacy will find the egalitarian chant objectionable, Sultani, a Palestinian citizen of Israel, told Al Jazeera. Freedom here refers to the fact that Palestinians have been denied the realization of their right to self-determination since Britain granted the Jews the right to establish a national homeland in Palestine through the Balfour Declaration of 1917. <laughs> um, it's important to remember this chant in English, and it doesn't rhyme in Arabic. It is used in demonstrations in Western countries, he said. The controversy has been uh, fabricated to present solidarity in the West with Palestinians. Now, the flip side, pro-Israel observers, however, argue the slogan has a chilling effect to Jewish Israelis with uh, what this phrase says is that between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean, there will be one entity. It will be called Palestine. There will be no Jewish state and the status of Jews in whatever entity arises will be very unclear. Uh, Yid Yedhua Mursky, a Jerusalem-based rabbi and professor of Near Eastern and Judaic, uh, Judaic studies at Bradias University. It sounds much more like a threat than a promise of liberation. It doesn't, it doesn't betoken a future in which Jews can have full lives and be themselves, he said, adding that the slogan made it more difficult for left-wing Israelis to advocate for dialogue. Uh, Mursky argued that those who chant the slogan are, quote, supporters of Hamas, end quote, while Sultani, the other side, claimed that pro-Palestinian protesters should not be equated to supporters of the armed group, who were the exception at the thousand-strong protest. Finally, 
Oh, yeah, that's the uh, just the slogan. So there's kind of both sides of it. And I guess the question that I would ask Chloe Swarbrick, because now you have to say this, right? If you're pro-Palestine, if you're a supporter of Palestine, this is what it means. If you're a supporter of Israel, this is what it means. And I guess those two sides are never going to agree on that. Um, so one of the questions that would be asked was, was it wise to use it? I'm, no criticism, by the way. I'm not saying she shouldn't have. But as an MP, you know, should she have used it or not? That'll be an interesting conversation, knowing that the other side think of it in a certain way. Now, I know some people, that will probably anger some people watching that I've even said that. I'm not saying she shouldn't have. I'm just saying as a as an MP sitting, was it inflammatory? Did it inflame? Is it the right thing to do there and then? I mean, personally, I don't have any problems with it. Personally, right? No issues with Chloe saying it. But from her perspective as someone, I guess, coming up to being in opposition, will it further the cause that she wants or will it drag it backwards? Because now you've got calls for her to be censured, maybe? Chewy? I, I, I think we, we're kind of circling around a similar sort of point to, to when we talked about Posey Parker getting sourced. Right. Is a politician should maybe see that as much as much as the argument around that phrase is, is potentially bullshit. I, I mean, that rabbi talking about, you know, uh, Jews carrying on their lives and, and all of that sort of stuff. Palestinians can't, can't carry out their lives, their normal lives, literally just down the road from him. So I'm sorry he's offended by a phrase. I'm offended by stacks of dead children and rubble. Uh, I'm I'm offended by uh, an Israeli uh, politician suggesting that they should nuke Gaza and get it over and done with. Um, can I sorry? Can I interrupt? I want to sorry. Yep. I'm, keep your keep your thought process there because I just wanted to bring this up because I think there's a really really good point you've just made, right? Which is these are words, right? This was hmm. a story from CNN over the weekend. A Palestinian American family Jesus. mourns 42 wow. relatives killed in a single day in Gaza. So the point that you just made about what Gazans can actually do right now, Palestinians can do right now, there's stories coming out now. And thanks to social media, you know, we're getting accounts that wouldn't normally be there. So examples of a single family losing 42 people in one day, not 42 members of Hamas, 42 family members killed in a single day in Hamas. So I actually think the point you've made then is really, really good and valid, Chewy, that the, the Jewish rabbi is saying it speaks of a future where we may not be free to live where we want. And then we go, well, how about today? How about hmm. today in Gaza? And I just wanted to add this into your point because I read this through the weekend. And no, that it's, kind it's, of, it's, it's exactly right. Yeah. So sorry. You continue. Know, I, 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 I really struggle with this one because it's like, I absolutely understand the reason why Israel was formed. I understand the the wars that they fought uh, for their existence and how that has framed the country that they are now. Their reaction, I think, to this is completely phrased by what's what's happened in the past. When someone comes for me, I will come back at them with such furious anger that they will never do it again. Yeah. And that's, they, they did it when Egypt, Jordan, Syria, all of them, you know, you're completely surrounded on all sides by unfriendly nations armed by the Russians. Um, that, that, that you had to knock people back on their heels so hard that they wouldn't do it again. But they have applied that to, basically a place smaller than Auckland they have shown absolutely zero restraint and and their stated goal of getting hostages back this isn't going to accomplish that they're flinging out so much high explosive around how they're going to find anybody and they've absolutely poisoned public opinion against uh, uh, against them as well. There's been more focus about how Palestinians have been treated that I have seen in the past week than I've seen for years. Yeah. The the running death toll of, of Palestinian civilians, it's always ticking over. It always has been. This is just a dramatic uptick. There have been more civilians killed in the last week in, in Gaza 
and in the West Bank now as well, than there have been in the Ukraine in two years. Wow. It is just so out the gates disproportionate and they showing absolutely no heed to public opinion and Western leaders are absolutely paralyzed by this narrative that's been been trotted out that if you criticize the state of Israel or if you criticize the idea of Zionism, then you are anti-Jewish, you are anti-Semitic. Yeah. And and the world is rightly sensitive to that because the Holocaust happened. I, um, but you've got to be able to hold more than one idea in your yeah. head at the same and, time. And that's true, though, true. And like I told you this last week, because of the conversations we've been having, which I actually think have been very, like on day one, we reported that it, that the, it was being reported that Israel bombed a hospital. On day two, we said, well, there's actually BBC saying it looks like it came from in, within Hamas. On day three, we shared another, um, like that architectural group who said it looked like the rockets came from where. So we've actually been quite information focused on this. Yet because we've had that conversation, mentioning not both sides in the issue, but being giving you the information, I've been added to anti-Semitic lists going around Twitter right now. So I'm on anti-Semitic lists going around Twitter right now. Which I don't care about, but that just goes to show that it's like if you're not 100% with us, then you're 100% against us. And that doesn't help anything. I just wanted to say, Rachel in the chat has just said that um, in Dunedin there's a woman who's lost 21 members yep. of her family in eight days. Now, I, I not, I'm not saying this makes it even more atrocious, but we don't need to look to CNN and something in America. We can look to our own stories. You know, in Dunedin, 21 members of Dunedin women's family killed in Gaza. So I actually think that point you made, Chewy, and I'll say nobody, because I hope nobody watching the show would ever think that. Nobody wants to see harm come to the citizens of Israel. No one wants to see surrounding areas or, or, or terrorist groups, you know, literally push them into the sea, right? No one wants to see that. But equally, at the moment, what's happening is no one wants to see what's going on in Gaza. And like, no one wants to see the threats that Israel are saying are coming from that chant. But even if they were threats, they're just threats at the minute. What's happening in Gaza today is, can I use the phrase ethnic cleansing? Can I use yes. the phrase Holocaust? Probably can't. That's probably wrong. Can I use the it phrase raise it to the ground? Thing. Like, so, so we have on one side... People being offended. Look, let's just let, let's just do this, right? And again, this might annoy some people. Let's just say that the way is uh, the uh, Council of Israel, if that's what it's called, um, is correct, and that's what the phrase means. It means we want to see the elimination of all Israelis. Let's say that's what it means. That's what's a projected future based on a slogan that might happen in the future if everything lined up. That's now happening in Gaza today. So my there's, there's focus. The slogan, and then there's the doing. My right, focus, we'll my focus to seeing something stop. If I could pick, let's stop them saying the slogan or let's stop buildings being pancaked in Gaza. I wouldn't be so worried about the slogan. I'd be more worried about the buildings being pancaked. Yeah. I think that's where I am. I, I, I think getting back to the history of Israel and the way that they do things as well. Like it, Israel has shown that they have the resources, the patience and the cunning to be entirely surgical when they go after someone yeah you know they've taken out leaders of hamas and the plo in the past and hit exactly who they want to do at a moment of their choosing you know if they wanted to do a decapitation strike or find out who planned this attack i'm sure if they bided their time they they would be able to do it i i wouldn't even really be talking about this as the idf wanted to roll people back in, into gaza to to put the wall back up to, to roll up as many Hamas terrorists that were in their territory as possible. But Israel has the luxury of being one of the most militarized countries on the planet. What concerns me is the person that is doing this, um, Netanyahu, is an enormously unpopular leader in Israel at the moment. Yeah, there, There's a poll, 75% disapproval. There is a corruption inquiry into him. He has stacked the judiciary which is making people very, very uncomfortable. There was a protest outside his house this weekend, um, including families of people who have been taken hostage, 
and the police were mounted police were set upon them. So I, I'm really concerned about how this attack happened, was allowed, well, not allowed to happen, how, how it went on for so long and why this is, is, is it stacking up? Is it reinforcing the leadership of a deeply unpopular leader? Because people tend to rally in, in times of conflict. Is, is, this, is this a country that is, is so well protected and so it's such an overmatch on its adversary that they had the luxury of time and they had the luxury of restraint and they are using none of it. They are just using fury and firepower against a city packed full of children and civilians and Hamas in, in, the, in amongst it. There's, it's calling for a ceasefire till everybody fucking works out what's going on benefits nobody but the civilians and that's what this that's what this front and center i don't care what the israeli government thinks i don't care what the jewish council here thinks unless we are talking about civilians unless we are talking about dead children in the middle of you know we're not having hamas fighters in an arena versus idf fighters Mm. you know if if they want to do that i'm all for it I personally think the solution to this, as unlikely as it is, is they need to get to a place between Palestinians and Israelis saying this land is important to both of us and we need to meet in the middle. And when one side is just getting pushed to annihilation, when you have entire generations of families being wiped out, do you think that the survivors are going to look at Israel and go, yeah, fair enough? Yeah. It is going to be generations, just like it was in in Ireland. Yep. The sectarian violence there, that went on for generations until it got to a point where people went, maybe that's enough killing. Do you know what? I can speak to that because I had second cousins in the IRA, right? And I never never, never met them, but my my mum went there a couple of times, several times, and... Um, they used to live, uh, relations live in a part of Belfast, back down to a mountain called the Black Mountain. And the teenage boys would be out at night, come back with soot all over their hands. And mum would say, what are you guys doing? And they're saying, making Molotov cocktails up the, up the mountain. And mum would talk to them and say, why do you guys do this? Why, why are you involved? And they didn't know because it had become generational. They did it because their dads did it or their uncles did it. They had no actual input. They, they hated the English and they had no uh, real cognizant why, reason as to why they did it just other than because that's what we do. And that's what you're saying. You're saying, hang on, this, these guys on, on, to the north of us killed my, my grandmother, my grandfather, two of my brothers, my dad, all these people. Well, why are we fighting back? Because that's what we do when someone yeah. kills 42 yeah. of your family members in one day. Kids are going to be raised in hate. And and yeah, I, I've been to that same part of Ireland around Belfast and that sort of thing. And, and you know, the, 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 thing, the thing that doesn't often get reported now is that there's still bombs that go off in Belfast now, right? But they go off in rubbish bins and the police get heaped to notice. And it's, it, it's almost performative violence at this point. Right. And it's almost like, well, I set a bomb off because my my dad's, dad's father got killed in the troubles. And I, I don't want to be the first generation to let this go. So so I'm going to blow up a rubbish bin. I don't want to hurt anybody. But, you know, that's taken them years. And, and the way that that sort of tailed off was religious leaders going, this has gone on too long. We've got to lock some people in a church and just fucking thrash us out and that took that, like how how long did the irish problem go on for Sinn fein like, got in most, in the late 80s of, early 90s most got, of got a century it. yeah i mean i mean probably the mid 90s i mean they, they they give they give um bill clinton quite a bit of credit for helping broker a peace deal so that would have been the 90s yeah so who who is going to wade into the Israel-Palestine situation, like Russia's all for it because it's drawn focus away from Ukraine. America is so horribly compromised by their evangelical 
um, commitment to stoking on the end times in, in, in Israel. It, it's it's just a mess. And, it, yeah. and and while we debate slogans and wouldn't it be nice if this happened, civilians get bombed and hospitals yeah. get bombed and ambulances get bombed and, and tanks are driving through a ruined city trying to work out if the movement they just saw was a family trying to get away or whether it's an, uh, Hamas fighters waiting to pull an ambush. Yeah. So you better fire and make sure.